All right, hello YouTubers or fellow YouTubers. My name is Christian Powell and you are beginning the broadcast or at least beginning to watch what I am liking to call, I guess, or at least dubbing the full purpose of Revelation. And inside of this, uh, I'm going to be hopefully interpreting Revelation to a more understandable level by looking at the whole entirety of Scripture and then going through it kind of methodically and seeing the juicy little morsels that pop up throughout Scripture. Now to prove this, and if you haven't guessed by now, this is going to be a biblical study of Revelation, so it's going to be involving the Bible. To prove this, uh, first and foremost, we have to look at 1 John, or the book of 1 John, chapter 5 verse 7 which is calling for the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit are one. And you're going to see that uh, and I'm going to be bringing back to this point a lot because what that is essentially saying is that the Father being eternal, the Word being eternal, and then the Holy Spirit being eternal are one. So we have this sense of an immortal being who comes down into mortal and then works through them and we're going to prove that in just a moment once again using scripture. Now, uh, in comparison with 1 John 5, 7, if you go ahead and go to the book of John, or the gospel according to John, in chapter 1, verse 14, we see that when 1 John is talking about the Word, it essentially is talking about Jesus Christ. He's saying the Word became flesh. And that is essentially talking about Jesus Christ once again. So by looking at this and coming all into it, we go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 again. It says, The Father, the Word, whom is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are one. Now to build a little bit more on this so we can build the entire sense of what's going on, we're going to go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 13. And we can see that the Holy Spirit also known as the Spirit of Christ, which manifested itself through the prophets, foretelling the sufferings of Christ that would come, which is then told to us in the Gospel. So we can see that uh, essentially it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, uh, the Father, the Word, or who is Jesus Christ, so the Father, Jesus Christ, and the uh, Spirit of Christ, or the Holy Spirit, are going to be kind of our mapping throughout this. And the reason I bring this up is because when it's talking about the Spirit of Christ through the prophets, foretelling of Christ, and then we look at a later bit on in uh, Revelations, and I'll probably bring this up again when I come back to it, uh, we see that the Spirit of Christ, or the testimony of Christ, is the Spirit of Prophecy. Now, when saying this, I can't but help but think of Austin Powers. And if you look in, uh, at... The third movie of Austin Powers, Gold Member, it has this scene where Doctor Evil is in this huge, me or this huge glass rather, um, jail cell, and uh, Austin Powers comes up to him and he runs up to Austin and he says, "Remember when I said we're not so different, you and I?" And then he goes back and he says. Uh, we're not so different to you and I. And it flashes back to the first movie, and then it flashes back and says, see, I did say that. So essentially, if we're looking at that through scriptural eyes, as unnecessary as that is to look through those type of eyes, uh, we see that the Holy Spirit, which revealed this to John, also revealed many things to the other prophets. And in doing so, he's saying, go ahead and look back at those prophets so you can interpret what I'm saying here. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be interpreting the vision, hopefully to an extent that you haven't seen before. So, uh, and going on from that, I ask you to give yourself ample time when watching these uh, segments and videos, so that if at any point you need to stop just as uh, and start to check up on the scripture, just as I had said, you pause the video, take time, flip through your Bible, look at it to see if what I'm saying tr is true. Because the last thing that I want from you is to receive me in blind faith. Don't think that I am some type of this huge figure that you can't understand anything. I want to walk you through this kind of incrementally and as elementary as possible. So I don't want you to be confused at anything that's being said. So please, at any time, if you get confused or if I'm going too fast, stop the video, pause the video, go through your scripture, write down whatever you need to do. Uh, and that's essentially going to be the method and hopefully this uh, unison or this friendship or this brotherhood, whoever you are, whether you be of the faith or not of the faith, as you watch these videos, this is how this this relationship between you and myself is going to work. Now, we'll be covering many books in the Bible, and in doing so, hopefully opening up the whole uh, amounts of prophecy waiting to be interpreted in Revelation. So once again, we're not just going to be covering Revelation. We're going to be covering Old Testament, New Testament. We're going to be jumping all over the place. And I ask you, as soon as I say scripture, you write it down so once again you can check. Because I want this to be a fluent thought process, but once again, this is my own interpretation. So I can't readily say that this is true. I am showing you the Word of God, and if you don't believe it, you're damned. I can't say that. 
But hopefully you'll see my method and kind of a method and logic to the madness of why I'm interpreting it the way that I am. And once again, I don't want you to feel in blind faith that you need to do this. Now, the things that you're going to need for this general Bible study, as hopefully you see it as, is you're going to need uh, two Bibles if possible. Now, the reason for two Bibles is I would uh, prefer you to have the book of Revelation open while you're interpreting prophecy. Or in general, if you're interpreting prophecy, always have the actual vision or dream open in the Bible. And then on the other Bible, flipping back and forth, seeing what you need to see, and then comparing texts and notes and things like that. Uh, you will also, I will be, by the way, using the New King James Bible, and I want to stop right there and iterate that the fact that New King James Bible, King James Bible, NIV, any other Bible that you can think of, we have to look at God's divine spirit as taking authority in this matter. And uh, to be honest, if your faith depends on but one word or one verse or one chapter or for that even matter, one whole entire book of the Bible being interpreted in such a certain way, and if it's not interpreted in this way, it's wrong then you need to reanalyze your faith because if your faith doesn't just come from the entire whole and sum of the matter which is the scripture which is Jesus Christ died raised, and was raised from the dead so that we who may believe on him may have everlasting life being given the Holy Spirit and then becoming you know servants unto God and inheriting that throne with Jesus Christ as you will see in Revelation it says then once again you need to kind of evaluate your faith don't just go off of one word being different and then have your entire faith break down. You know, I've heard stories of people who have seen that, oh, well, these couple of lines or these couple of verses are different and my entire faith was based on that. And then they leave the faith. And that's, to be honest, somebody who is very young in Christ would probably do that. But if you're older or if you're more mature in the spirit, as Paul so aptly talks about, whether it be in Romans or in other different uh, epistles and things like that, he talks about us being mature in the faith, leaving the base principles, no longer being carnal, but knowing that and being able to decipher, you know, when the Holy Spirit's talking and the entire lump sum of the matter. And I might even get into the Gospels being in that premise later. Now, that being uh, said, I want to tell you my story of salvation and why I'm deciding to do this today and why a really, really good friend of mine, Leith, is deciding, deciding to do this today. And you can't see him, he's off screen, but he's sitting nice and comfy on the couch right now. And uh, that being said, for long story made short, I was a sinner. Shocker. I was a sinner like most. I did kind of really uh, abominable and very nasty things. And my kind of sin of choice, if you can get what I'm saying, was compulsive lying. I like to lie a lot. And I, it is nothing against my parents. It really isn't. Uh, both of my parents have doctors, very well-educated individuals. But at the same time, um, because of the doctors, they didn't have a whole lot of time to pay attention to me. And I don't hold them responsible for that. I actually thank God that that actually happened be, so that all of this could happen now. Uh, and my salvation story is made the way it is. But uh, in my compulsive lying, I got into a lot of bad things. It eventually, I mean, age-old story, I lied a lot. I lied to a point where I couldn't even handle myself. I wanted to commit suicide. Um, I was drinking, I was smoking weed, I was doing the whole nine yards. And it wasn't until I reached out for God. It wasn't really until I told God, if you're real, prove it. That's all I asked. If you're real, prove it, you know, that after that, I had a series of dreams. And there's three specific dreams that I'm thinking about. And since then, I've had quite a bit more dreams. And that's not me bragging to myself. That's me saying the power of God does still work in the spirit in today's form, whether it be dreams, visions, or gifts of the spirit. Those things do, in fact, still work today. And I am evidence of that. I will tell you that fully and truly. And there's not a doubt in my mind. But uh, instead of just telling you the whole sum of the dreams or even uh, the three dreams that I kind of take a lot of weight into. I'm going to tell you the one big one. Uh, so once again, my name is Christian Powell, and this is the beginning, I guess, of my walk in righteousness and salvation and how I became to know Jesus Christ. Uh, so I was standing on this beach, or rather I was in the water on this beach, and uh, I was about couple of feet in the water and the uh, water is going up to about my knee and I'm uh, like 6263 if that matters to you if you're trying to decipher or trying to you know understand this dream on a deeper level but uh, I looked to my right and it was the first day I looked to my right and there was nine individuals 
and I don't remember who exactly they are, and I don't remember their faces. Um, I do remember one as an African American, interestingly enough, but uh, they were my best friends in the world. That's all I knew. And it was the first day, and it was the evening of the first day, and one of the individuals came up to me, and he hit me on the shoulder, and he says, dude, look. And I looked up in the sky, and there was seven stars. There was three bright and shining stars in a column. There was a red star, and another three bright and shining stars. I said, oh, that's cool, and I shook it off. Then the second day, it was the evening of the second day again, and one of the individuals came up to me, he hit me on the shoulder, he's like, dude, look. And I looked up in the sky, and the six bright and shining stars in the columns had disappeared, but it was just the red star this time. And I just kind of looked at it and said, oh, that's kind of weird, and I shook it off and went about my time. And then it was the third day, and it was the morning of the third day. The same individual came up to me, hit me on the shoulder, he's like, dude, look. And I looked up, and the red star was shining during the daytime. And as I saw that, I said, that's not good. And as soon as I said that, thousands upon thousands of police officers rolled up in their cars on this beach and we heard over a loud uh, speaker, this is not a drill, do not ask any questions, go back to your homes immediately. We repeat, this is not a drill, do not ask any questions, go back to your homes immediately. So the nine filed off the beach to this beach house that was directly behind us and I walked behind them um, and somehow I ended up at the beach house first and I, as I walked to the beach house, I opened the door to the beach house and I let the nine go in before me and I walked into the beach house and I closed it behind me and as I walked into the beach house, I heard a ton of gunshots and screams going on outside. So then I ran through the living room into this garage area and I walked through the living room and as I walked through the living room I looked to my left and as I looked to my left there was a TV screen and it had this lady on it and she said there's civil unrest in Syria and there's civil unrest in Egypt. Now I would like to pause right there I had this dream about three years ago now, so I've been in my salvation and my righteous journey, or righteous journey, I've been on my walk of salvation for about three years now. And there's many people who I've told this to, I've written it down once, um, this is the first time I've really ever recorded it on video, but yeah, this was before anything was going on in Syria, this was before anything was going on in Egypt with the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, as far as the chemical attacks, if you can remember, this happened right prior to the chemical attacks in Syria. Now, I'm going to unpause that because once again, this all glory goes to God. This is saying nothing of me. It's just showing the power of God is still at work in today's day and age. So unpause. Uh, as I walk through the door, I end up in this garage area. And as I'm in the garage area, the nine individuals are sitting in a circle around me. And we're in there for three days. And I know that because one would look and say day one, another would say day two, another would say day three. And then on the third day, we heard more gunshots and screaming going outside. And we heard a loud knock on the garage door. And I looked at the nine and all of them kind of got really quiet. And they just said, shh, shh, be quiet. Like they were trying to shush everybody inside of the garage. And then the garage door opened up about a foot and this arm slid under it. And it had a black glove and a red sleeve. And I looked at the nine and all of them started to panic and freak out and told me, no, 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 no don't do it. And for some reason, this massive amount of rage built up inside of me. And I lifted on my arm and I just smacked it as hard as I could. And it retracted. And we heard a voice on the other side of the door say, this is not a drill. Come out with your hands over your head. We repeat, this is not a drill. Come out with your hands over your head. So the nine filed out of the garage through the living room. And I walked out of the garage. And as I'm walking through the living room, I looked at this TV screen again to my right. And it had this lady. And it was just a newscast. And there was this red list scrolling up beside her. And one by one, I kid you not, one by one, she said, this government's collapsing, this government's collapsing, this government's collapsing. And she's saying all these governments all around the world. But as she was saying this, it'd pop up on this red list and it was scrolling up. And I walked out the front door of uh, the beach house and I closed the door behind me and I looked out to a sea of just thousands upon thousands of people in these lines with the hands above their heads like this, getting guided into the back of these vans by the meanest looking soldiers you've ever seen in your entire life, with big old black guns and red camouflage. And then I looked up into the sky and the red star had turned into a planet. And the planet had like the atmosphere of Jupiter and it opened up every once in a while and you could see uh, blue, which meant there was water on it. And as I saw that, I got kicked into one of these lines by the soldiers and I'm about to get in the back of one of these vans and as I'm about to get in the back of it, one of these, uh, somebody, to, uh, tugged my left shoulder and I looked to my left and it's just this man with a beard. That's all I can remember about him. He says, we need to go now. I said, okay, let's go. So we started sprinting towards the beach and as we started sprinting towards the beach, hundreds upon hundreds of these soldiers started chasing us. And as we get to the beach, there's about a mile long dry dock system into the water off the beach. And we look at each other and we say, okay. So we started sprinting onto the dry dock system and all these soldiers started chasing us out of the dry docks. And as we get about halfway through, this water spout starts coming down and starts ripping up the docks. And we look back and the soldiers start panicking and they start sprinting back towards the beach. So me and this individual look at each other and say, okay. So we start sprinting back towards the beach. And as I get to the beach, I put my right foot on the beach and the entire sky goes black for about 30 minutes. And all you can see is that planet. 
Then over the horizon, the silhouette of what looks like another planet rises up and it takes up about three-fourths of the sky. And it turns on like a computer screen. And it says in all these different languages, I am your God, and this is the rapture. And as soon as it says that, these eight ships that look like there's something out of Star Wars or Star Trek or something pop up in front of it. And they start flying around to all these different individuals on the beach. And it was asking them, will you be raptured? Will you be saved? And people were saying, yes, yes, take me. But I could see they were only saying yes because they were afraid out of their mind. They had no idea what was going on. And I start running towards the beach house. And as I get to the beach house, I put my right hand on the beach house. And one of these things comes up to me and hits me on the shoulder. And I turn around and it says, will you be raptured? Will you be saved? And I said, no. And it popped up this question mark on like a television screen. And it asked me again. It said, will you be raptured? Will you be saved? And I said, absolutely not. No, because I could tell this thing was absolutely no good. And I walked into the beach, or I opened up the door to the beach house. I walk into the beach house. I close the door. And as I look open, or out into the beach house, there's this spotlight shining down on like a podium. And I walk up to the podium and it has a Bible on it. And I try to pick up the Bible for the life of me. I can't get it off the podium because it's like chained down to this thing. I keep trying to get it off and eventually I just say, enough. And I start kicking out the podium. And as I kick out the podium, I then drag the Bible attached to the podium into the garage. I open up to the Bible, to the book of Revelation. I start reading and then I wake up. And then this, I guess, is the outcome of three years after that journey, or three years after that dream, rather. And I hope that you get some sense of, I don't know, at least more in-depth than prophecy. And if you can't, or if you disagree, I ask that you comment below on the sections. If there's anything you agree with or you disagree with. Because in doing so, we can both expand our faith, or maybe I won't, I'll be able to elaborate on something, or maybe you'll be able to elaborate on something. And if, whether we be doing this, uh, you know, compromising, or whether we be saying and edifying, or whether we be saying, eh, you know, that's maybe not true, or not right, or this is what I think might be right, what do you think? Let's do this in brotherly love, and let's do this in kindness. So please don't leave any vicious, mean, malicious, anything comments below, because it will we won't read them i mean but we are looking to read on expanding of knowledge so once again this is the introduction video to the book of revelation interpretation as done by me christian powell thanks and have a good day